Now you're welcome back. Our final segment here for Wake Up Nigeria has us with Dr. Maimuna Yusuf Kadiri. She is a mental health psych uh, physician, um, also advocate and coach. She is here to talk about the negative effect of hard drugs on the body and management of addiction. You are welcome, Dr. Maimuna. Thank you. Fantastic to have you here. We were having a discussion just from before the show, yeah. and I think most of that is going to go in. Now, um, let's talk about addiction. First off, let's define it and get it out of the way before we go into other things. What is addiction? So addiction, as the name implies, is not not um, something that is sudden, is not, um, not an event, it's actually a process mm -hmm. and it's kind of linear, it goes through stages. So you find out before somebody gets addicted to whatever, mm -hmm. food, mm. <laughs> yeah, because people just think it's only drugs, right? You have initiation. Mm. Then you start experimenting. Initiation is just the first time. Yeah. Experimenting, you start using it and oh, for pleasurable activities or to distress or whatever it is you want to. Then you go into regular usage. Mm. Regular usage does not mean that it's every day, but maybe weekend mm -hmm. or some other days. Then risky usage where you know you are using it regardless of whatever it is, and then that is even more regular. Then the, you go into the what we call dependency. Mm, where you can't that, do without yeah, it. Exactly, and dependency just means that you are increasing the dosage to meet up that initial high that you mm, got mm. before the addiction. Mm. And if care is not taken, the last stage is either crisis or treatment. Mm. So, when people say, I think I'm addicted, maybe you are just a regular user. Mm. Maybe you are still at the stage of maybe risky behavior where, yeah, risky behavior will come, maybe we start lying mm -hmm. or um, selling things to get, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fund your habit or, you know, those kind of things. But when you get to that dependency or the addictive stage, it's not only lying, it's not only selling property, you start having issues with the law. Mm -hmm. You may have hangover coming to work every, almost more frequently than when mm -hmm. it was uh, experimenting or the regular usage. Mm -hmm. So addiction is, and when it comes to drug, it's a chronic mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not just a fancy word of, I'm, I'm addicted, yeah. no, it's not fancy, it's so a chronic the, mental this illness. Is, this is mostly habit, it starts from initiation, initiation. Like say, and then it becomes a part of you. Exactly. Now, habits are one of the hardest things to break. I can tell you from <laughs> personal experience that once you start something, um, it, it's, it, even if you, it's seen as harmless, mm. it, it sometimes is just the, the motions that you're looking for yeah. to that actually brings you pleasure. Yeah. Like cigarette smokers will tell you that simply having something, a, pi, a, a pen in between their hands, mm -hmm gives them pleasure mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. How can one break such a habit that you perhaps had for many years? It How takes time. easy is it? <laughs> it takes time. It takes a minimum of 21 days to form a habit. And uh, it can be for years. So before you say you want to break a habit, it has to be coming from you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that mindset. So even when you see people that are addicted to drugs, you find people that come willingly and say, I want to rehabilitate. Mm -hmm. And some, they will have to be forced, military, so they whatever to bring them and force mm -hmm. them. So breaking a, a habit has to come from that individual saying, I want to. Mm -hmm. So even if you are forced, it then means that you have to go through the stages of breaking that. It doesn't come as easy as, I want to get off this thing, mm -hmm. I get off this thing. So. I give a typical example for any drug addiction and mm. you are coming in. Most times it starts with medical detoxification. Mm. What is that exactly? How where, does that work? Where you want to get rid of the substance in the body mm -hmm. in a safe environment. Okay. Because the person has been trying, most likely, he or she trying to get out of this substance and it, it has very bad side effects, mm -hmm. like withdrawal symptoms and the easiest way to curb that is to go back to the substance again. Mm -hmm. So when they go into um, a rehab for medical detoxification, they are being chemically treated. So, so they would, they would be ingesting it, or exactly be ingesting they, chemicals to help them get rid yeah, of those medications to, that would get them. So that's why it's called a medically assisted. But once you get that out of them, then there's that need to get back to get. They will manage you withdrawal symptoms. So I've heard where instances where they are given some of these substances uh, that they're addicted to in, in small doses to kind of like... Uh, kind that of is harm redu reduction. Okay. Well, yeah, harm reduction is just means that you are reducing. So for amounts. example, you start like five cigarettes per day or you're taking two packs per day of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You gradually start reducing the number of cigarettes and mm -hmm. with time it will be you no... Know, um, maybe one or half or gradually, and it takes time. Yeah, it does. So harm reduction, yes, it's also good, but the truth is that 
when it comes to substance abuse, mm -hmm. what are you abusing? Mm -hmm. What mode are you abusing this substance? Mm -hmm. And I uh, know how, how much are you taking in? Um, what your personality trait? Because the thing is that some people they come for the rehabilitation. Their personality is that type that look, I want to be that. I don't care whatever is going to happen to me and all mm -hmm. that. So personality also comes in. And what kind of care are you even looking into? So mm -hmm. all that come into play. Because when I talked about medically assisted detoxification, that is not the only thing. We have a lot of therapies that mm -hmm. can help the individual. Cognitive behavioral therapy, where mm -hmm. you recognize your unhealthy behaviors, where you will be able to cope with skills that mm -hmm. can help you. Rational emotive behavioral yeah. therapy, those ones will help you, you know, rationalize things yeah. better. There are two subjects I want to move on to real quick, and I'm hoping that we have plenty of time. First of all, you talked about cigarettes. They're one of the hardest things to quit uh, in any case. But then there's that debate out on um, uh, um, uh, cannabis. Mm. Now, if cannabis <laughs> is medical, if cannabis is bad for you, obviously it is, but that debate, where, where do you stand on that? So the thing is that being an expert in this field, we see a whole lot with regards to should cannabis be it is legalized yeah. <laughs> because that is even a big issue mm -hmm. right now Worldwide. where there are people that are pushing. Or um, we should just look at it the way we see alcohol and cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Given the part of the world we are in, mm -hmm. I would sit down here and say, in Nigeria, I would not support legalizing it now. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the future or something, if things change, okay. or legalizing it now will cause more harm. Because with the COVID-19, there was an exponential mm -hmm. usage of oh. different type of drugs. And cannabis is also you know, one of yeah. the top three. And it's so easily... It's, easy, it's, it's affordable, too, too, yeah. it's available, it's accessible. So legalizing it is just going to just mess up. The, so there's a medical aspect of usage of marijuana mm -hmm. but the addictive substance in marijuana is nine tetrahydrocannabinoid which is very addictive mm -hmm. so you can't say i can't sit down and say marijuana doesn't have medical use it has for pain mm -hmm. especially for palliative care end stage illnesses and i'm sure people will also be listening or what about the liquid one they sell and all that most of those ones have been you no know, rift of all the addictive substances. Okay. Yeah, so they okay. can be used medically. Mm. So let us not confuse, yeah. you know, the marijuana, marijuana, and okay. the one that people are, is being sold and being, you know, uh, okay. um, supported. I, I, so <laughs> I, I've got another debate for you here. Now, as a psychologist, I need an answer to this one. Okay. Now, let's move away from drugs and talk about another kind of addiction. And let's talk about the addiction where one is addicted to self-gratification, sexual self-gratification. Mm. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Now, is that a bad thing? One. Two, how can one actually uh, stop such a thing? Addiction in any form is bad. Mm. Let's, whatever, whether it is food, whether it is sex, whether it is drug, whether, addiction is addiction, like what I said in those stages mm. that before you get into addiction, mm -hmm. is bad because the moment you get addicted to something, you are chasing the eye, it's affecting your activities of daily living, legal issues will come in, it starts affecting your interpersonal relationship with people, productivity will also mm -hmm. be affected. Yes, can you get out of it? Most mental health disorder, just like physical health issues are treatable, manageable, and beatable. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, do you have the right mindset that I want to quit this? It's easier. It's like 50% to the expert, our expert team of expert managing you. Mm -hmm. When you come and say, I think I need, I think I've gotten to my to this limits, point and yeah. I want to get out of it. It's different from somebody that doesn't see any reason for quitting that anything of addiction mm -hmm. and you have, it has so to be do forced. So people come to you based yeah, on that? Say, hey, I, I, I do this and I, I want to end yeah, it. Yeah, we have a rehabilitation center. For that? Yeah. You're kidding me. For real? People come in, people come in for What's all manner of What's the process of then? <laughs> the process is first thing, are you, somebody, you, you coming in willingly. Mm -hmm. That's the process. Another one is somebody referring you. Mm -hmm. Another one is going to our website and say, oh, I think I, I, this so people are here. So what do you do? <laughs> to them it's a do team you, a team it's a team it? of mental health experts psychiatrists psychologists psychotherapists psychiatric nurses occupational therapists social worker it's a whole team of people managing you it's not a one size fit all okay. and of course we have to know even your background mm, okay. is this a heritage okay. chain and so many other okay so real quick in. and finally so um just so people have an idea of regardless the addiction that they mm. are into just so they have an idea of what this process is like and how agreeable it is, could you give them, uh, um, could you encourage people on what happens and how they should uh, take on their new lease? Yeah. 
the thing with addiction that is why it is bad is because it affects you as a human being, affects your relationship, affects your productivity, and a lot, whether your spiritual life and mm. physical, it affects others. So what I would, I would the hope is that most mental conditions are treatable. Mm -hmm. So for you out there, if you are dealing with any addiction, it's good for you to come to that recognition that this is affecting me, mm -hmm. money-wise, financially, spiritually, and all that, and seek for help. Help is available, and getting the right set of people is also available. Wow, okay, that's very <laughs> encouraging. Thank yeah. you very much, Dr. Megmuna. It's very good, good to have you here. <laughs>